Warning, this episode contains brain food that will lead to improved emotional and social intelligence. Give us one hour and we'll help you change the way you think about happiness. Harvesting Happiness with Lisa Cypress Kamen is fresh, optimistic, and purpose-driven media that promotes well-being from the inside out. Each week, Lisa spotlights diverse trendsetters and change agents who are the greatest contemporary thinkers and doers, devoting their lives to creating a better world in which to live. Your host, Lisa Cypress Kamen, is a widely recognized applied positive psychology expert, author, documentary filmmaker, and lecturer specializing in optimal lifestyle management. Let's get to it. Here's Lisa. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining us on today's show, the first episode of 2021. New Year, hallelujah. Today, you will learn about Simple and Delicious, the science of nutrition-rich eating for better physical and mental health. Let's get to it with our first guest, Dr. Joel Furman. He is a board-certified family physician, seven-time New York Times bestselling author, and internationally recognized expert on nutrition and natural healing. He specializes in preventing and reversing disease through nutritional methods, for more than 30 years, Dr. Furman has shown us that it is possible to achieve sustainable weight loss and reverse heart disease, diabetes, and many other illnesses using smart nutrition. The book we're talking about today is Eat for Life, the breakthrough nutrient-rich program for longevity, disease reversal, and sustained weight loss. Welcome, Dr. Furman. Thanks for joining us on the show and providing us very important information about how we can take control of our health. Thank you. Great to be here. So talk a little bit about this, the, the concept of us holding our health in our hands, because um, we often think that we are the victim of our DNA. I know. It's just, you know, there's so much, you should say, misinformation that people have, you know, began to actually believe this idea that our health is predominantly genetic that we're not in control and we need drugs to get well. And you know what? The last two decades, these advancements in nutritional science have made 100 percent clear that you don't have to have a heart attack or a stroke. We can put that these are diseases of nutritional ignorance and with, a, with nutritional excellence, we'd have a heart attack free nation. And even most cancers, I'm saying 90% of cancers would never have to occur if people took proper care and ate properly. But, you know, the, the most encouraging thing is that these diseases that afflict most of us, high blood pressure, being overweight, high cholesterol, diabetes, are reversible with the right type of nutritional interventions. And, you know, that's what I've been involved with for the last three decades in telling people that they don't have to be sick and that nutritional excellence can reverse disease. And as you probably know from looking at my book, all these people that have reversed their illnesses from autoimmune illnesses like rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis and psoriasis, but the, but the bread and butter of medical professions work, treating people with high blood pressure and high cholesterol and diabetes are quickly reversed and people are able to get back to normal and not have a longer life without getting dementia or the mental you know, diminishing mental and physical capacity that afflicts almost everybody. And certainly, certainly who wants to be alive and live their life in a nursing home. But, but, you know, but today we're thrust with a, with a new issue, of course, and that's people that are ill from eating prop improperly can be an urgent risk of dying from a COVID infection. So that we have all this put together today right now going on. So I want to, I want to ask you something about the mindset of the typical American, because we see so many advertisements on TV for pharmaceutical companies that tell you, if you take this drug or that drug, it will help whatever condition that you are are experiencing, which is maybe the easy way out, but that you could experience a whole host of other conditions as a result of this medication. And we tend to want the easy way out by the prescription pad, by, you know, by taking a pill. And what I'm hearing you say very loud and clear is by just taking better care of ourselves and eating more consciously that we can prevent and reverse a lot of these conditions. The vast majority. And, you know, I have to say there is no easy way out. Yeah. The drugs we, drugs we use for autoimmune disease cause cancer 
and people wind up suffering with leukemia or some unusual cancer once they're on those drugs for a few decades. When we give people medications for high blood pressure, certain medications increase risk of breast cancer, for example, but other medications, just lowering your diastolic blood pressure too low to get your systolic in the favorable range, you're lowering diastolic to a to a degree where you don't get enough oxygen perfusion of the heart during diastole and you have irregular heartbeat like atrial fibrillation caused by the blood pressure medications and now you got to go on drugs for atrial fibrillation and those medications have side effects and blood thinners then you're on blood thinners and proton pump inhibitors and those medications cause heart attacks and it you know there's no easy way out once you're on this once you're in this medical merry-go-round, you're then treating the side effects of one medications with more medications and, and people's lifespans are not extended. They're not seeing lower risks of heart attacks. We're not seeing tremendous benefits against cancer. We're going nowhere. You know, it's still 70% of the population over the age of 65 are still dying at the same age of a heart attack and stroke in spite of all these treatments and medications given them. And the rate of people dying with diabetic and, and getting diabetic complications of blindness and kidney failure is still at the, is not, not seeing significant improvements. What I'm saying is, if we're going to see a radical improvement in the health of our population, you can't get there through medical care. It's not medical science that's going to get us there. Yeah. It's like hitting yourself with a hammer and expecting a pill that's going to take the way of the pain when you hit yourself with a hammer again the next day. We've got to deal with cause and dealing with cause is a hundred times more effective than just taking drugs while you continue to, while you continue to abuse your body with food. And let's talk about high quality nutrition. I mean, you talk about nutritional excellence. What I think we're talking about is eating a diet that makes perfect sense once you elaborate on what that is. Sure. The, um, the foundational principle, of course, is eating a diet rich in phytochemicals and antioxidants and getting a broad diversity of, phyto, of these nutrients available in the plant kingdom, you know, without exceeding our um, caloric and without exceeding our need for calories. We, have to, we actually have to go after moderate caloric restriction to maintain an ideal weight while we expose ourselves to a huge amount of micronutrients. And we do that. And by the way, when you get micronutrient adequacy, when you have enough phytochemicals and antioxidants from eating the greens and the onions and the mushrooms and the berries, when you have enough of that, it naturally decreases your appetite. You, you stop being the calorie consuming monster because the right foods give you the right feedback to your hypothalamus to shut down the apostat. You know, mm -hmm. so but what I'm saying right now, too, of course, is getting back to your original question is I have this acronym G-BOMBS, G-B-O-M-B-S. <laughs> so people can know the foods we're talking about that have the most scientific support and the most efficacy to reduce potential of getting cancer and the most disease reversal effects. And the G-BOMBS stands for greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds like flax seeds, chia seeds, green vegetables, meaning leafy greens like salads, but also cooked in, and walked in other types of greens like broccoli and artichokes and asparagus. And of course, um, different types of beans, including edamame and soybeans and red beans and chickpeas and lentils. And, you know, onions include, of course, leeks and scallion and onions and garlic and mushrooms with a multiple variety of mushrooms that we have that have anti-cancer effects are just incredibly protective food against cancer. So we could throw a dart at any of those foods and describe incredible studies showing their efficacy, but also what's in those foods, the actual benefits that the foods give our body and our body's dependency on these foods for nutrients that enable our immune system. And what about taste? I mean, these are foods that taste really good. And if one is not used to eating cleanly in this way, it may take a little bit of an adjustment. But ultimately, you are going to feel better, be healthier, live longer and enjoy eating. You know, thanks for bringing that up, because, you know, over the last you know three decades of my career, We've cultivated the most incredible array of incredible recipes of how to make healthy foods taste great, you know, from cauliflower pizzas to, you know, vanilla and, you know, um, banana based vanilla ice creams and chocolate, you know, desserts that are made with, you know, just all fruit and whole grains and things like that and with no sugar and no sweeteners. With, you know, but you're right. It you know, a person used to salting and, and eating so much sugar and sweeteners, their taste buds become deadened. 
and they don't appreciate the beautiful um, foods and flavors and textures. And they're even they're so dead in taste buds they can't even enjoy the subtle, um, you know, symphony of pleasures on your of taste on your tongue with that's available in the natural world. In other words, it's a better tasting diet. And when you get in better health, your taste gets better too. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's actually more enjoyment of food, not less enjoyment. And of course, you know, this is, it's you know, called a no brainer, but of course there's a period of time where people are still addicted to their prior diet and they don't feel as well and their taste isn't overly stimulated like their old diet. And you know, these highly concentrated foods that have a high concentration of calories and rush into the bloodstream so fast, they become addictive substances that trigger overeating behavior and signal and stimulate dopamine centers in the brain to make you want to eat more ah, and, and, make you, and, and take over and take over brain function in the way you think about food. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it's my understanding that when we look to eliminate the culprits of bad health, that we look to white foods, white powdery substances, flour, sugar, salt. Um, these are the things that cause inflammation in the body. Yeah, I always say the white of the bread, the sooner you're dead. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, and I always, I always joke around. I say, um, don't trust anything too white. You know, cocaine, cigarettes, white bread, and I call the American diet the cake diet because people eat like pancakes, muffins, cold cereals that are processed grains in the morning. It's just like eating cake. And what's a muffin? It's just a piece of cake without a, without an icing on top, or they have a donut or a, or a bagel. It's just all white flour is the same as sugar. There's no biochemical difference between a sugar cube and eating a flour product. And then they have a hamburger for lunch or a pizza for lunch, a slice of cake with a piece of meat or cheese on it. It's like a white bread is cake. And then for dinner, they have white flour pasta or white rice or some kind of more cake. It's just, it's, they're eating themselves to death and they, with, nothing, with no awareness of, that, that they become what they ate. I mean, my, I remember when my little, my kids were little babies and they were four and five years old, they used to say to me, why don't people know why, what they eat makes their body? They just put all kinds of junk in it. They say, you know, it's just like everybody just does it. And it makes perfect sense. I had an experience a few years back with an autoimmune disease and I was told that I would not be able to heal what I had, which was Graves disease, by the way. And I, I said, fine, I'm going to go and try. And I did, I reversed it and I've never had another episode and it's been about 12 years. And so that is where I first came into contact with eating nutritionally excellent food, that it was really important to eat the kind of food that kept inflammation down in the body. And, and what I was putting in was actually helping to heal the condition. Absolutely. And it's just, it's so powerful. And there's so much needless suffering going on of people that are suffering with, you know, psoriatic arthritis and lupus, where they go into kidney failure and get a kidney transplant, when all they would have to do is change their diet to get well. And they'd rather go through a kidney transplant than change their diet. It's just unbelievable how, it, you know, it's funny because it brings up a case of where I had a, a teenage girl at 16 who was on the national renal transplant list with, oh. with lupus, waiting to get a new kidney. And she got totally well by changing her diet. And she just got all 100 percent back to normal again. Amazing. And it's just like we're jumping with joy when these things occur. And it's just like, and everybody has to know this, that you don't have to be sick. And now we have people dying needlessly of COVID and even some people that aren't elderly or don't have such serious sicknesses. But you know, it's, it's, it's the weak and the people who are eating poorly are placing themselves at incredible risk. And, you know, and nobody's talking about that, you know, that a healthy diet is the secret and is the answer to why people, some are getting hurt and some, and some die and others don't. It's all in our hands. We have the power to control our, whether we get a heart attack or a stroke or get demented and we can reduce our, and all the common cancers never occurred, you know, hundreds of years ago. They're all the result of dietary and environmental challenges. And so is COVID. COVID is nothing in the, in, in, in its effects on a healthy, a real, a truly healthy person eating an excellent diet. Let's take a pause. And when we come back, let's talk more about that ways that we can uh, bolster our immune systems through this clean eating. To learn more about Dr. Joel Furman, please visit drfurman.com on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That handle is Dr. Furman, except on Instagram, uh, 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 Joel Furman M. I believe it is, or MD. The book we're talking about today is Eat for Life, the breakthrough nutrient-rich program for longevity, disease reversal, and sustained weight loss. We'll be right back, and that is a promise. Wait just a second. Before we take that little pause, I want to remind everyone that there is more to life than day-to-day -day worries. 
family, community, and self-care, they are all top-notch priorities. But sometimes life calls for a little guilt-free pleasure. Call it a break, a pause, or a mindfully mindless reset. That's just the moment when I like to clear a few levels on Best Fiends, the five-star rated mobile puzzle game with more than 100 million downloads. I'm happily hooked, and if you're anything like me, you will be too. Don't miss out on this must-play game that is boredom's worst nightmare. Playing Best Fiends allows me socially distance fun time with family and friends in different places. Best Fiends gives my brain a rest from the daily routine and challenges me with an exciting puzzle experience unlike any other out there in cyberspace. In fact, I play between interviews and sometimes I steal a few minutes for myself between virtual meetings. No Wi-Fi or cell data service required. So why not join me in my happy, harmless obsession over at Best Fiends? The fun never ends at Best Fiends because with more than 5,000 levels, you'll never run out of goals to achieve. Don't blame me if you end up kind of obsessed. Download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Now let's take that quick break. To learn more about cultivating sustainable well-being at home and the office, visit HarvestingHappiness.com and explore Lisa's experiential on-site brain fitness workshops, corporate programming, and speaking engagement services. We are back talking about simple and delicious, the science of nutrition-rich eating for better physical and mental health. Let's get back to the conversation with Dr. Joel Furman. Dr. Furman, prior to the break, you began speaking about maintaining good nutrition to protect us from COVID-19. And you said something that was really interesting. It got my attention when you said that COVID is nothing if we take care of our bodies. And I want to really uh, put some attention there and really drive home how important it is to take care of our immunity. Absolutely. You know, it's funny because I wrote a book, Super Immunity, a few years back, and I actually predicted or not say predicted, but I discussed the fact that, a you know, some viral or bacterial infection is going to ravage the modern world because so many people have a poor immune function that we're going to be spreading. It's going to spread too quickly through the population because, because more people are overweight and obese and unhealthy. And the amount of healthy people today are so, are such, a, such in, the, in the minority, you know, so in any case, and, the, and this is not going to be the end of serious infections in our lifetime. We the only way we can protect ourselves with security and confidence is by being in great health. Getting our so now's the time if you've thought about it, if you've checked out, if you haven't dieted, if you're giving up on dieting or losing weight or think this is too tough for you, you didn't enjoy it in the past, you failed in the past, now's the point to jump back in, do it right and realize that this is fun. It tastes great. It's it's exciting and puts you back in control of your life and removes the fear. And, it, you know, so it is just so many benefits and the all the, the objections people have are mostly delusional and irrational excuses that addicts have. There's no good reason why a person can't do this and enjoy it. So absolutely that, you know, you that we have incredible salad dressings that are healthy to put on a salad where you put a little raw onion or raw scallion or cooked mushroom pieces in the salad or a little bit of cruciferous green that's so protective, that's so important for immune function, like arugula or shredded or a little baby bok choy or, mm. you know, lettuce. What I'm, I'm saying is you, <laughs> you know these protective foods, we know how to, and we know how to make the salad dressings taste incredible, you know, you know, little sun-dried tomatoes. Tomatoes with that are soaked in tomato sauce with some mashed in almond butter, you know, a little black fig vinegar and roasted garlic in there. We make an incredibly delicious dressing that's healthy with no sugar and no oil or a real or a navel orange or a piece of mango blended with some toasted sesame seeds and cashews with some blood orange vinegar and a little squeeze of lemon is unbelievably delicious on a salad. The salads taste fantastic and people learn to love them. You, you can't be healthy unless you're eating raw green vegetables and you're not going to, there's no way your body can work. It doesn't function. Well, the, the ARE in the cells, the, it's called the antioxidant response element that works to repair broken DNA cross links and remove toxins and re repair damage is dependent on these green vegetable derived nutrients that you can't get. You have to live close to a hospital and have your body deteriorate if you're, but so you have to know how to eat. And I'm saying right now that these, 
these four foods are so critical to incorporate in your diet. The two raw foods that help the breed the most favorable immune system and the most favorable microbiome at the same time, build up a real thickening of protective beneficial bacteria, blocking out harmful bacteria and viruses. Of course, the two raw foods are raw green vegetables, like salad and raw, you know, and raw kale or collard, whatever, and, and raw onion or scallion. You mm. have to eat that raw. You, so this, eating something in a salad is so critical. And the two cooked foods are the cooked mushrooms, which we cook in water or we stew or something in a soup, and cooked beans. So that combination of beans, mushrooms cooked, and, and onions and greens raw is incredibly protective. What are the most nutritionally packed bean? Well, you know what? People are not going to believe this. But even though we use azuki beans and red kidney beans and black beans as very powerful protective against cancers like breast and prostate cancer, but the most powerfully protective against cancer, especially breast and prostate cancer, is the malign soybean. Oh, really? You know, yeah, the genistein and the fibers in soybeans. Soybeans have a particular anti-estrogenic effect on breast and prostate tissue. So in other words, what I'm saying is that from being overweight, the fat cells activate aromatase, which means overweight people produce more estrogen and have more fatty infiltration of the breast tissue, so more estrogen stimulation of breast tissue. And of course, now what we're saying is the body that the, the soybean and other beans too, but the soybean in particular has, has the opposite effect, anti-estrogenic effect to block the exposure of the estrogen receptors to the extra estrogen. Of course, losing weight and getting healthy, you're going to lower the estrogens anyway. But we want people to eat a variety of foods. And what we find is that a symphony that the, a, a variety of foods are important for maximizing human health. And never before in human history did we have an opportunity to eat such a variety of high nutrient plants like we have today. So while we have this opportunity to eat, eat garbage and ruin our health, we also have the opportunity to have great health and live longer than ever before and really be super protected if we want to. In the book, um, in your book, Eat for Life, the, uh, the Breakthrough Nutrition Rich Program for Longevity, Disease Reversal, and Sustained Weight Loss, you have the Nutritarian Diet Recipes. And amongst these recipes are some things that are absolutely, to me, mouthwatering. Egg, uh, curried eggless salad with cashews and dried apricots for one. Edamame corn and tomato salad with balsamic dressing. You've got desserts in here that look absolutely incredible. Uh, almond blondies, blue cherry crumble. This is not a deprivation diet. This is a feeding ourselves diet. Yeah, and you know, it's like people will taste some of those desserts and the first time they taste them, they'll say they're not as sweet as what I was expecting because we're not putting sweeteners in and we're flavoring it with a little bit of maybe date. Maybe it's one date per serving, max, or something like that. But the point is, it's amazing how when you get healthier, your taste gets better and you start to enjoy these desserts and these flavors and these, and these menus and recipes better than your old diet. You know, I did publish a study on more than 750 people looking at that issue is how much, besides their hunger and weight loss and, and their food addiction symptoms, we also tracked whether they enjoyed eating this way as much. And we found that as the months went by from the beginning to month six, they had a gradual increase in how much they loved the recipes and liked eating this way. And at the five or six month mark, they liked eating this way either as much or more than their initial diet. And I want to, I'm looking at more of these recipes. I'm, I'm now on the avocado toast with shredded Brussels sprouts, which sound incredible to me, but you advocate the use of whole grain sprouted bread. It's not like it's, you're not saying never have another slice of bread in your life. You're saying, let's just swap this out for something that's meaningful. Right. And I, you know, and I, we make our own breads and grow our own sprouts too, but there are some brands out there that are made from whole grain sprouts that are really low glycemic. And I have no financial relationship with those brands at all. I'm not benefiting by mentioning their names, but it's things like, you know, um, like Ezekiel breads or the Amata breads. Is there are these frozen breads you can buy in the, in the health food stores and the supermarkets that are really healthy, but most people buy those soft breads that are like high glycemic that are made with like pastry flour that melt in your mouth. You know what I mean? But the, what I'm saying, these tougher, more coarse breads are more natural and have lower glycemic effects is what the ones we recommend. Uh, there is a G-bomb Thai vegetable curry that is on my list to try. 
I'm going to be making that, I think, tonight. I mean, these are very, very flavorful foods. And I think that we can all agree, listeners included, that diets really don't work. Yes, you can drop weight by going onto a diet plan, but it's really about making this holistic lifestyle shift from I'm going to lose weight to I'm going to take charge of my health. Right. Well, thanks for bringing it up. It's so critical because people think they're going to do something to lose weight, but it's, you're not going to keep it off and it's not going to benefit you unless you stayed eating that way for the rest of your life. And you can only stay eating something for the rest of your life if, if it meets certain criteria and it has to be something that's going to be healthy for you long term. So why start with something crazy at the beginning? Start with because you're eventually going to weight's going to gravitate towards where you where your diet gravitates to long term. So we have to get people to gravitate towards a long term healthy diet and teach them about eating to prevent disease and eating for life and eating to keep their brain function and their physical body intact and eating to enjoy life. And then your weight will take care of itself. I have a question. How many pharmaceutical prescriptions do you think the average 50-year-old is on in America? I don't know. I'll I don't know. It. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm asking. But I, I, there, there's uh, a method to m- the madness of the question. Yeah. I know most people over 65 on drugs are on more than one, more, are on more than one medication, and they're not tested and, and studied to be on multiple medications the way they're prescribed by doctors. And they, they're toxic. We've yeah. learned in the, first, in the first pharmacology course in medical school, they teach us all drugs are poisonous. They're toxins. They work by blocking, interfering, or you know, some way of, of stopping body function. They're not health foods. They're not nutrients. They're damaging. And there's no side effect. Every drug has some poisonous effects, which we call side effects because they are poisons. The other day, I was making an appointment with a new healthcare provider for just an annual physical, and I was doing a a history over the phone. I'm in my mid-50s, and the person who was taking the intake asked me what my medications were, and I said, none. She says, what do you mean, none? I said, none. Why would I take medications? She goes, we don't don't really hear of that here. That's sad. It's very sad. sad. Yeah, sad that we have such we have so many sick people, so many suffering people, and even we're seeing now young people get strokes and younger people now get diabetes. And I have a young, per, you know, young people with getting kidney failure. It's like it's just so sad that people aren't really. It should be reading, writing, arithmetic, and nutritional science because we have we're destroying the, the population and we're destroying our our modern world we're causing an extinction of you know it's just like we're doing so many things that all um, falls back and goes back to taking care of our bodies rightly and making right decisions long term with the right foods in our mouth and to at the same time long term decision making that properly takes care of our, our earth at the same time but what I hear you saying is if we want to preserve health longevity, uh, immunity, not get COVID, not get cancer and not age without losing our minds. The path is through what we put in our bodies, what we ingest, what we eat and the lifestyle that we choose, which does give us control. It gives us a miraculous degree of control that has given me a tremendous, I'm so I'm grateful for the, be able to have, you know, taken care of so many hundreds of thousands of people and help so many thousands. And, you know, through some of my PBS radio television shows too, obviously millions of people have seen, have been exposed to this work and are getting this messaging from other doctors that, are, that I, as well. So I think that there's more greater awareness of this type of control people can have over their health. And now it's time for the population listening out there to jump ship off the junk food and start yeah. learning how to live healthfully and do this. And then, and, and cause we all got, we're all together. You know, we all are together as a family on the world today, and we've got to take care of our health, take care of our planet, and really be in, 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 be joined working for common, the common good, you know, and have goodwill for each other. Dr. Joel Furman, thank you for teaching us how to take better care of ourselves to learn more and to read Eat for Life, the breakthrough nutrient-rich program for longevity, disease reversal, and sustained weight loss. Please visit drfurman.com on Twitter and Facebook at Dr. Furman and on Instagram at Joel Furman. Dr. Furman, thanks for being with me. Thanks for, for sharing your passion with us. I mean, it, it, it comes through. My pleasure. So good, best of health, of course, to you and all your listeners. Thank you. Here comes the break. We'll be right back. Plain and simple. Did you know that happiness is actually good for your health? Happy people live longer, are more productive, and make better partners, parents, and professionals. Connect with us on Facebook at Harvesting Happiness. 
and follow Lisa on Twitter at Lisa Kamen for a daily dose of inspiration. Welcome back. We're talking about Simple and Delicious, the science of nutrition-rich eating for better physical and mental health. Let's bring on our next guest, Andrea Hanneman, also known as Earthy Andy. She is the creator of the popular Earthy Andy blog and Instagram account. After years of battling IBS, celiac disease, hypothyroidism, asthma, brain fog, and chronic fatigue, Andy healed her chronic health issues by embracing a plant-based diet. She's a surfer, free spirit, and mother of three. She lives in Oahu, Hawaii with her family. She is the author of the new book, Plant Over Processed, 75 Delicious and Simple Plant-Based Recipes for Nourishing Your Body and Eating from the Earth. Welcome, Andy. Thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me. It's great to talk to you. It is great for you to be here because for the first time in my adult child's life, she is impressed with one of my guests. This is no joke. (laughs) (laughs) You've been on the air for 10 years. My daughter is studying to be a dietitian, and I shot her a text before we got started. And I said, this is who I'm interviewing. And I sent her Earthy Andy's website. um, And she goes, OMG, I know her. I love her. Her kids are so cute and her smoothie recipes. So you have definitely touched the pulse of young adult America for sure. That makes me so happy. She sounds like such a sweet daughter. And I think it's so cool that this young generation is so interested in health and making the connection between how they feel and what they're eating. And it's just a brilliant generation. So I think it's awesome. And it's just, you know, it's really a testament to them of how forward thinking they are and making things happen for themselves. I agree. And since they are inheriting the earth, literally, they have a big responsibility to to do the earth right, you know, and I think that influencers like you who help mentor um, these young people and teach them the right way to eat, the right way to take care of themselves, the right way to treat and give back to the earth, I think also makes uh, a big impact. Yeah, for sure. I think it's really cool how we can learn and share and just grow from each other and information is more transparent now. And yeah, it's a good time to be aware of our actions and how it is affecting our earth so we can keep it in good condition for a longer time. So Andy, tell me a little bit about your health story, some of the challenges that I mentioned during the intro and how it impacted your choice to adopt a plant-based diet. Well, for most of my life, I had um, just a host of health problems. It's actually something I became very used to and just figured this is the way life is. I One thing that I realized once I did change my health for the first time is I didn't even know you could feel this good. And it was the first time experiencing this level of health. And I thought, how many people are out there that don't even know that they are feeling this sluggish, you know, way and brain fog without, you know, ever experiencing the other side of clarity and energy and just feeling, you know, naturally positive and happier. I, as a kid, had asthma and all sorts of things. And it wasn't until my parents took me to a specialist that found out that I had um, celiac disease. It was a main main part of my problems um, rooted from that. And so I got that under control. But as I got older, I just started having more and more problems. You know, you listed the ones at the beginning, like hypothyroidism, celiac disease, brain fog, IBS. I had a really poor relationship with food as a result of it. Um, It was even drinking water would cause um, an inflamed stomach. I would throw up quite often as a result of just not being able to digest any food, really. It felt like everything was um, really hard for me. So I would wait till the end of the day as much as I could to eat because, you know, I'm a mom. I have to be out and do the best I can for my kids and just life in general. And it was 
just I was always just waiting to the end of the day because so I could sit down. And mm. once I changed my health, I it changed like I was excited for every day and I no longer had these um, symptoms weighing me down. I felt like I could live my life for the first time without having that in the constant background of my life. And so this was about five years ago that I made the change. So that's what I was going to ask you. So five years ago, um, did you intuitively find your way to a plant-based diet? Did you have a mentor? Was there somebody, a nutritionist or somebody who led you to that path or your own research? Well, my dad told me, you know what, I think you should spend this year just dedicated to figuring out your health once and for all. And so I just kind of approached the year that way. I wanted to figure it out. I went to go see specialists and see doctors, get as educated as possible. And it was challenging because I often went to a doctor, get my blood drawn, and they say something like, okay, you need this medication. Okay, you have this problem. This is your medication. And Mm -hmm. for me, I wanted to solve the problem. I didn't want to cover it up with a medication that, you know, leads to other problems and the side effects. And I finally found a doctor that took my blood work, did an analysis on me and said, yes, you have a host of problems, but I can help you. And she was the first one to address solving my problems. And so I worked with her. I would see her almost twice a month. And I wasn't having a ton of success. And in during this time, I was also re- doing my own research. And I kept coming across these plant-based diets. Mm. And at the time, I didn't really believe these testimonies out there because at the time, I couldn't imagine eating a piece of fruit, let alone a whole plate of fruit. Because normally, that would make my stomach, you know, balloon and feel terrible. And so the more I researched, I just kept coming back to this plant-based lifestyle and I was intrigued by it, but I was also a bit annoyed by it because I just was a bit envious that these people could eat this way and feel so free and abundant. Like it was something that seemed so foreign and unattainable for myself. But so at the time I was eating, the doctor told me eat 80% plant-based, 20% Um, animal protein. And so I was eating pretty clean at this point. I'd cut out sugars, artificial sweeteners, but I wasn't seeing a lot of results for myself. So I decided I'm going to go fully plant-based for 30 days. I just had this realization that I just, I just needed to trust in nature and give it a chance. And through my research, I had read that, you know, plant-based foods are the most gentle on your digestive system. Like a few pieces of fruit takes a cup, like 30 minutes, as opposed to a piece of meat that takes 24 hours. So I just thought, okay, if my body has a hard time digesting, what if I eat the most simple way possible? What's most gentle on a body? And so I gave myself 30 days to experience this. And in a nutshell, it changed my life. Like the doctor said, I don't know what you're doing different, but don't stop. And that was the one thing that I changed. And she'd taken my blood work. And for the first time, my results started to skyrocket. I started to feel a change. And it just built momentum from there. That's a, a one, It's a wonderful story, you know, with a very happy new beginning for you. And I, I want to ask you about how you got your family on board. Because I think that you, you've got three boys. Um, One is a toddler, but the other two were around when you embarked on this journey, right? They were, yeah. Yeah, I just decided at first that I wanted to change for me. And so it was too overwhelming to think to change for my family as well. And I also didn't know if it would work. So I had no confidence in it yet. So I decided I wanted to try to do this new lifestyle, which seemed very extreme at the time and keep it a secret. I wanted to see if I could go on with my normal life (laughs) and make this extreme change. And no one noticed. Like I had barbecues, we had Easter, not even my husband noticed until he ordered me something um, when we were on a date. And I 
it was gluten-free calamari. And he was like, oh, I ordered you this while I was in the bathroom or something. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to eat it. I'm I'm actually a vegan now. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> <didn't> what? <laughs> he's like, no, you're not. There's no way you're not going to eat this. Like he did not think that I would get through that meal and not eat it. And that was the first time I had told him what changes I was had made and how much better I felt. And he was really excited for me because he knew how much I was dealing with these daily issues and to have a something positive to say of a change was I think a relief for him too. So he was really encouraging. And so after I realized, okay, this works, I learned more and I wanted to, you know, feed my family better. So I started just slowly changing our shopping and adding more vegetables to our to our meals, changing out snack foods like, you know, gummy bears or crackers for more just natural, natural options, or even using leftovers for a snack instead of filling up on these empty calories like I used to give my kids all the time. Mm. And eventually I just, you know, changed our groceries completely and kept introducing these new foods and it just became the new normal. It didn't happen overnight, but it just, I just kept putting it on. Even if there was resistance, just, you know, it's okay. You don't have to just try it. We had this rule. You didn't have to like it, but you had to try it. And so, you know, I think kids resist things because they're not used to it, but once they've seen it and they've tasted it, six or seven times, it's a new familiar food. And so by the end of the year, there was a whole array of new healthy foods that they were used to and now starting to request into their diet. And um, a year might sound like a long time, but when you have your whole life ahead of you, it's such a short time. So I always tell parents, you know, be patient, um, just one thing at a time. Every time you introduce something new that's a new item that your kid can enjoy and benefit from just like yourself and before you know it there'll be a whole new a whole new lifestyle and habits within your family and and you make delicious food i mean the the recipes in your book plant over processed 75 delicious and simple plant based recipes for nourishing your body and eating from the earth is good food it's good, clean, healthy, tasty food. And who doesn't want to, to, to feed our engines, you know, high quality fuel? For sure. And coming from a background of not vegan or super healthy, it was really important for me to create recipes for my family that tasted like they're normal, you know, yeah. like real flavorful. If they're used to cheese and sauces. And so that was my challenge to not make you feel like you're ever missing out and you're really enjoying the flavor of every meal as much as it's benefiting you at the same time. And I'm here to give testimony that it can be done. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will continue the conversation with Andrea Hanneman to learn more about her work and her book, Plant Over Processed please visit earthyandy.com on Facebook uh, at Earthy Andy and on Instagram at Earthy Andy. Here comes the pause. We'll be right back. And that is a promise. Who says money can't buy happiness? Whether you are a skeptic or seeker, check out Lisa's new book. Are we happy yet? Eight keys to unlocking a joyful life. A boot camp manual for greater emotional fitness is available at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, IndieBound and HarvestingHappiness.com. Here's a truth bomb. Emotions are contagious, and happiness is a universally desired state. But we tend to forget that we all have the freedom to be happy or the liberty to be miserable each day, regardless of external circumstances. Explore the journey of human happiness, how to find it and keep it, with Lisa's documentary film, H Factor. Where is your heart? Visit HarvestingHappiness.com to learn more. back. 
I'm hanging out with Andrea Hanneman, also known as Earthy Andy. We're talking about Simple and Delicious, the science of nutrition-rich eating for better physical and mental health. Let's get back to the conversation. So Andy, let's talk a little bit about the recipes in the book and how you went about building the library for the recipes that we see and enjoy in the book. Oh, I spent so much time and thought into this section of the book, and it was so fun to do. I really wanted to make it as user-friendly as possible. I wanted it to be something that, whether you're a health nut or new to health, it's something that you can enjoy, you can make with ingredients found in your home, and just make it as flavorful and healthy, but as easy as possible. And so there's a few things that I did in the book to make it user-friendly. I have a pantry section, list of ingredients that you can use, and groceries. And all the ingredients are in the pantry and in your produce, your fridge, are all ingredients that are used in all the recipes. And there's quite a few recipes that go along with other recipes in the book. Like there's a sauce and drizzle dressing section and all those drizzles can be applied to a nourish bowl or a salad or another recipe in the book. And so it has all sorts of things inside of it to show what you can use with what and um, use and how to incorporate your own ingredients. Um, You know, not everyone lives in the same place in the world. And so if you live in a place where you have mangoes, you can use mangoes and in place or pears in place or, you know, just interchange simple ingredients to make it your own and to shop local and make it as healthy as possible. So yeah, it's very user-friendly, tastes delicious, and I'm so excited for people to try it. It's I put a lot of effort and time into it for sure. And it's our family favorite. I know from my daughter and the plant-based recipes that she cooks like she's made some incredible dishes that you you cannot tell that it's not dairy based she's made a um a plant based macaroni and cheese using um garbanzo bean based pasta she's made a uh, dairy free vegan cheese risotto some oh and and a, and a polenta cake with blueberries all using um plant based products and the stuff is incredible yeah that Yum. sounds so good. I think that's when you know it's a good recipe yeah. when you can't tell. You can't tell. Yeah. You can't tell and you go back for seconds or you use it the next day for breakfast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. That is definitely when you know you got a good recipe worth sharing for sure. And so talk about the kids now. So their ages, I think you said 12 and almost, was it almost seven and two? 12, almost eight, and one just, my last one just turned two, three boys. And how have they gravitated towards the plant-based diet? And like, what are some of their favorite dishes? Because my attitude is if if you can get a boy, an active boy to sign on and like these things, the odds are this stuff is really, 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 really good. For sure. Yeah, they they love it and actually request it now. It's, um, It's just, I think their taste buds, are used to it and they thrive off of it. And when they ever eat, when they go to their grandparents or something and eat a bunch of junk food, they come home and say, Oh, I just can't wait to have a smoothie or (laughs) rice and beans or something more sustainable for them. They can, they've made the connection between how they feel and the food, which is, you know, such a, such a powerful tool throughout your life to recognize. And so, yeah, I mean, they eat all the recipes in the book they eat. They're they're all family friendly. So give us a couple of uh, flavors, you know, give us a hint of some of the recipes in the book. I've got a lot of soups and stews, curries, got a few salad dressings. Um, We've got a cheese made out of plants. Sounds like something that your daughter makes as well. There's quite a few desserts that you can make. But using plants, um, got some nice cream, some smoothie bowls, smoothies. Um, I think there's about seven or eight different sauces that you can use to um, add a flavor punch to your nourish bowls or salads. Um, got some dips. There's there's everything in there. It's 
all of our family favorites. It's all been tested by an array of friends and and like you said before, it, it's got to be enjoyed by everyone and you shouldn't feel like you're eating something super healthy and that's your only reason eating it. You got to yeah. enjoy it too. I think that's a big part in, in life is enjoying flavor and, you know, it's, it's important. <laughs> yeah, in, in feeding ourselves, it's not just filling up, you know, to quell hunger, but really nourishing ourselves and feeling as though we're we're giving something good to our bodies and creating memories at the table with our loved ones. I think that's the other thing that really strikes me as um, a cornerstone of this book. Yeah, for sure. You know, like food is something that brings us together. It's a social event. It's you create traditions around it. It's such a part of your everyday. And so it should be a positive one for sure. And you live in Hawaii. You live in one of the most gorgeous places in the world to embrace this lifestyle and share it with us. Talk a little bit about that because I think you grew up in Canada. Did I read that right on your bio? Yeah, I grew up in um, Saskatchewan, Canada. So that's like out 18. there where it's really cold. <laughs> yes, <laughs> very cold. Winter is definitely the longest month there. And did you settle in Hawaii as a young adult or did you arrive there? Like what, what was your pilgrimage to your home? I moved out here when I was 18. It was always a childhood dream of mine to move here. And I actually didn't think it was possible for, from where I grew up, Hawaii was like this, you know, dreamland that didn't really exist and back when I was a kid you didn't have social media to just look up places so I would go to Blockbuster and look for videos that had little pieces of Hawaii in it and just just dream yeah <laughs> and actually one day when I was um I think I was 12 or 13 my dad said, you know, if you want to move out there, you could, you just have to save your own money and get good enough grades and you could apply to school out there. And that rocked my world because I didn't think it was possible to come out here and live out here. And to know that there was an option of that was so motivating. So I dedicated every dollar I could make and I got more serious about school. And I got denied the first time, actually, and I had to do a year of college in Canada and reapply. And I got accepted, and my life just unfolded really fast here. I met my husband um, shortly after, and we've been here ever since. So I came out here when I was 18, and I'm almost 35 now. So I've been wow. out here a while. Wow. Yeah. Is he from Hawaii as well, or is he from the mainland? So his family is, he has a lot of family here. His dad's Samoan and his mom is from Virginia. And so he actually has six brothers. There's seven boys in his family. Wow. <laughs> and um, half of them were born here in Hawaii. Then they moved to California for 15 years. And then they moved back here 15 years ago. So he has a taste of California and Hawaii in his upbringing. Wow. And I bet that's interesting to have a part Samoan family where their their foods, you know, that what is culturally normal for them is a very, very different diet, although it's plant rich. Yeah, there's a lot of meat in it as well. Actually, my husband's family has a burger restaurant. And when <laughs> I went vegan, my husband was managing these burger restaurants. So Going vegan felt very extreme to me at the time, <laughs> but, you know, it goes to show that even if your close family are doing whatever they're doing, you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to eat a chicken nugget, that's your choice. If I want to eat an apple, that's my choice. And no one really cares. You know, people think, oh, I'm going to have to change my social life if I, you know, adapt this extreme way. But, um, no, I I really learned that no one really cares. If you don't bring attention to it, no one's no one's keeping tabs. And so just do you and you'll be totally fine doing whatever you want to do and eat however you want to eat. I love that message because in addition to 
you know, eating in this way for better health, there is a message about sort of stepping into one's power and pursuing one's passion and taking charge of one's life. I mean, that is the, the other message that comes to me through your work, you know, through Earthy Andy, the work you do as an influencer and as an author of the book, Plant, uh, Plant Over Processed. And I think that's, that's influencing a lot of people. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be this extreme thing, you know, it's just, you just go with it and just own it. And something that I learned, um, and I had a lot of practice at because I was celiac and always had to say no to things for my diet was it's instead of telling people, no, I can't, it works just to say, oh, thank you. I'm really craving this right now. And say, you know, an apple or a drink or you know, it makes people more comfortable instead of saying, oh, I can't, I'm on a diet or I'm vegan or I'm this and that. It makes people a little like, oh, on edge because, you know, people want to serve you at a barbecue or whatever. And so if you say that, it will just, it'll just take the pressure off and you can stick to your health goals and move on. It works so well, I promise. <laughs> well, it's leading with what you can do. You know, so it's a, a, it's really speaking to the positive side, you know, the, the upside of making good, healthy, nurturing, you know, empowering choices. And I think that is the other part of this conversation. Andy, thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate your work and the way you're touching hearts, minds, and bodies around the world. And I can't wait to try these recipes. And I owe you a recorded meditation, which I promised to send uh, to learn more about <laughs> <laughs> Andrea Hanneman and her book, which is entitled, the full title is Plant Over Processed, 75 Delicious and Simple Plant-Based Recipes for Nourishing Your Body and Eating from the Earth. To learn more about Andy's work, please visit www.earthyandy.com. On Facebook at Earthy Andy and on Instagram, that handle is at Earthy Andy. Thanks so much for the work that you do and in, in spending time with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, I feel the same way. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Harvesting Happiness today. This is Lisa Cypress Kamen and my guests, Dr. Joel Furman and Andrea Hanneman, also known as Earthy Andy, wishing you kind thoughts, kinder words and the kindest of actions. Until next time, remember, happiness is an inside job. Happiness is your inside job. Go out and rock your day. Keep harvesting your own happiness anytime and anywhere from the comfort of wherever you are. Subscribe, listen, and share hundreds of downloadable episodes via our free app or from our libraries at toginet.com, iTunes, Google Play, and other fine podcast platforms. To learn more about Lisa's global consulting services, please visit HarvestingHappiness.com. Spread more joy by liking us on Facebook at Harvesting Happiness and following Lisa on Twitter at Lisa Kamen. Harvesting Happiness is produced in collaboration with TogiNet Radio, KBUURadioMalibu.net, and is available on PRX, the public radio exchange.